In 2005, the former Liberal government banned pit bulls in the province. But 14 years later, there are still pit bulls roaming Ontario. Now, Doug Ford and his government are revisiting the controversial ban that has dog owners and non-dog owners undecided. They are known for their intimidating, stocky, muscular build, but also for their loyalty. The pit bull gets mixed reactions from dog owners and non-dog owners alike. They're banned in Ontario, but the debate to lift the ban returns to the Ontario legislature once again. It was initiated back in 2005 uh, with very little evidence that pit bulls were vicious dogs and it was their bites. And that's why I am pushing our government to repeal breed-specific legislation. The provision added to the Dog Owners Liability Act includes four breeds that are often referred to as pit bulls. They include pit bull terriers, Staffordshire bull terriers, American Staffordshire terriers, and American pit bull terriers. But the ban also includes a dog that has an appearance and physical characteristics that are substantially similar. Pit bull attacks are well documented in the media. In 2004, a man needed reconstructive surgery after being attacked in a parking lot. In 2014, a toddler was attacked by their family dog. And most recently, police charged a man after a pit bull attacked three children in Huron County. In Nichols' own writing, a number of dogs were rescued from a dog fighting ring in 2015. Dogs, they, just go they were trained to be vicious dogs. It wasn't part of their DNA. Because breed-specific legislation has been in existence for now 14 years, what it's done is validated an already existing stereotype of the breed that is negative, that is aggressive and vicious. Hannah Sotropa is with the Toronto Humane Society. The organization is also in support of a renewed push to reverse the controversial ban. They rescue and rehome thousands of animals a year, including pit bulls. A lot of the pit bulls we've seen in our shelter and in our care have been wonderful, have been sweet and affectionate and trainable. I can personally speak to the fosters that I've had that have been amazing companions to me. Hannah says one of the biggest issues with the ban is it's too broad. They're mixed breeds. There are thousands of individuals in the animal welfare organization and industry that sometimes can actually misjudge what a pit bull looks like. That's how challenging it is to actually know, is this a pit bull? Take Casper, for example. He has a similar build, short hair, and short muzzle. But Casper is, in fact, an Argentinian dogo. We don't have an ability to just make an assessment by looking at an animal to identify what their breed is. Be patient. You know, do your find it pointed out. Karen Lyles is the owner of the Centre for Canine Education in downtown Toronto. <laughs> it's an impossible ban to enforce because you can't be everywhere all the time and there are a lot of things that you just can't control. Even with the ban, there are plenty of pit bulls in the province illegally. According to the City of Toronto, there are now 71 registered pit bulls. In 2005, there were over 1,400. Those numbers, however, don't show the full picture. According to Lyles, it's quite common for a pit bull to be labeled a different breed in order to escape the ban. Veterinarians and trainers alike are going to simply turn their turn their cheek, right, and just bring the dog in under the idea that it's perhaps a boxer mix or a lab mix or something like that. Lyles works with all types of breeds at her training facility. She says there are a lot of myths around pit bulls that simply aren't true. With pit bulls, I think we do see a lot of the myths about their jaw being stronger or that they have a lock jaw, which doesn't actually exist. If it did, it would be really quite dreadful. All dogs bite. If it's got teeth, it bites. And if any species, if any animal is pushed past their threshold, they're going to defend themselves. And that's the number one reason that dogs do bite, is because they feel threatened and they're afraid. Even with the ban in place, the City of Toronto continues to see an increase in dog bites. In 2005, there were 963 reported bites. In 2018, there were a total of 1,551 know that as soon as they get closer to sort of two and three years old, they might become less social. Lyle says so any changes to the current legislation surrounding pit bulls should put a bigger focus on dog owners. We shouldn't just bring them to a dog park and see what happens. We, we often think that if we bring a dog into a social situation that they're going to socialize or we're going to socialize them. But the socialization period is basically five weeks to 15 weeks. 
So it's a tiny window in a dog's world, in a puppy's world, where we can socialize them. The rest of their life, we're training tolerance. Our goal is to protect people and pets through a culture of safety, personal responsibility. The private member's bill redefines what a vicious dog is and calls for stricter punishment for owners, including fines up to $60,000 and a maximum prison sentence of two years. Under the current ban, pit bulls that come into the care of the Toronto Humane Society are kept in foster homes before they're moved out of province. The Toronto Humane Society works closely with the shelter in Calgary, which is a city Sotropa says Ontario should take a lesson from when it comes to dealing with dangerous dogs. We can't simply just remove the ban and expect for people to begin being responsible owners. What we want to institute is much like what Calgary has, which is a responsible owner legislation. By doing that and having dangerous dog legislation, that will meet the goal that breed-specific legislation originally had in protecting public safety. Ontario is the only province to have a breed-specific ban in place, while several towns and cities across Canada have taken the matter into their own hands. That could change as the bill works its way through Ontario's legislature. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.